So can someone tell me how how does a you know like the GPTs allow you to analyze big data, um, and how do these advanced data analytics as well as have you tried them? Uh, if you don't, you know there are a number of them, like almost every agent, but in particular the most known ones are open uh, code interpreter and advanced data anal anal analytics from Adam, so that's uh, from uh, OpenAI, and then LIDA, and then also I think the recent one from uh, basically Insight Plot pilot from Microsoft as well. LIDA is also from Microsoft. So how do you think they work, like based on your understanding? And what have you understood so far? It's the afternoon, I'm sleepy or sleepy, so let's just make it active. So Jara, maybe, what do you understand so far? Jara? Yeah, you can, Jara. Okay. Basilen? Could you tell us what you understand? Uh, uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Uh, okay, so it's not that I, I don't think I have a big understanding, I haven't read a lot yeah. about it, but from a couple, from the paper that was uh, published there and from the uh, generally what was recommended in the paper that I understood was so uh, it is a general model but there are, uh, so especially when we're trying to do data visualization, we would uh, be required to know uh, previous, uh, or context, uh, if I may say so. Uh, so this is a way to sort of give it context. If, if I'm right, uh, I, I don't think I'm saying makes perfect sense, but uh, no, it, but, it is fine. I think the, the most in, uh, part is that if you say it for me, then you will know if you articulate it. Then later, when you hear something, then you can pick it up. That's the most important part why I ask everyone. It's it's definitely not, if you know it, you know it. If you don't know it, but at least because you articulated your initial thought, then you will pick up. But I think all more or less it's there. It's not clear, slightly vague, but maybe others can improve it. Um, okay, Ikram. Uh, I think we have two Ikrams, but I think the one here, I assume, is the. Ikram Kedem. I mean, there has to be a house rule when someone is named called, they type or they say something. And if not, I mean, I think it's, as I said, it's not good. I hope, okay. So, Meron, what do you understand? Later on, so I, I'm not sure like what is happening. So can you please, all of you who are there, just can you um, press like one of the thumbs up that if you if you are hearing me, just so that I know. 
Abraham, Fanuel, Yupon, Yaya. Hi. Okay. I, I was late. I was late. It's okay. It's just that I, I call names and they not nor typing nor speaking. So I'm more worried that we have ghosts uh, there. So, okay, Meron. What, like, do you want me to repeat the question or you have heard the question? Yes, yes. Okay. So I'm more asking, like, what do you understand by, thanks everyone who thumbs up. So, um, what do you understand by this? How does GPTs do this code analysis? Like, more of when you, when you want them to do this advanced data analysis and visualization, what is your current understanding? How they do it? You know, what are the things involved? Okay. Uh, in my understanding, I uh, we uh, uh, we 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 will connect the API like GPT with our database and display with Redash. Then uh, the users ask on uh, Redash and uh, return. They 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 go. They can go. They can get answer about the, uh, our database like that. Thank you. Sorry. Thanks. I think that's correct. But what what do you understand? How the process like? How does GPT understand our about our database or about any of this? You know, what what does it take? What is the process to make it understand uh, so that it can write SQL query, Python code, you know, or visualization? What do you think it does? How do you think it does? So. Maybe, maybe then I'll ask other people just uh, so that I don't, it's not, if you want to answer my lot, you can answer, but, um, okay, so Brooke Bizuayo. Okay, thanks for a prompt reaction, Brooke. Um, okay, who wants to go? Uh, Abba Mitchell Thomas, what do you understand? So Abba Mitchell, can you? either type or okay um fanuel and then rudolph maybe just rudolph you can start and then fanuel rudolph okay uh, good evening Everyone. yeah i can hear you yeah okay so what i have on understand the, the way gpt works is when the the user send a prompt, the MLM take the yep. the information and connect to the database. Now, according to the the prompt, if he can split the maybe it is a question, he can split according to maybe. Maybe if it is a, a question related to descriptive uh, analysis, you can send the question to the database according to that. And when the database uh, send the feedback to the, the GPT or the, the LM agent, then this one can now reply to the user and the user can see uh, yes. the out. Yeah, but there is still the, the missing part, like how does it know your database and 
how does you know what does what is in between uh, between the database and uh, the llm yeah how does how do you and, and you know they have a chatbot that displays something and then there is llm that does something and there is uh, your database that hosts data so how does things work No, I don't really know this it, it's okay part. yeah no it's the yeah. most important part is to yeah to rephrase I think you know that's good Rudolph just for exactly you try it and and then later now when it's explained it's you are easier it's easier for you then to understand Manuel uh, hi can you hear me hi. yes I can hear you uh, okay so uh, I haven't gotten to the SQL part yet but uh, from what I read about assistance I think the LLM uses tools outside of its current training model. So it has Python interpreter so that we can feed it specific methods that it can call and, you know, to understand the data. And also like we can give it other data outside of its model training so that it can learn more about the specific type of function that we want. So let's say, if I wanted to interpret a reader's visualization, like you said before, like you can feed it a YAML file and you can gather information about that. Then by using this agent, you can call and you know understand the NLP, then provide us with the output that we want. I think that's what I understand for, for Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Um great. No, I think so. Uh also Driva, could you ex like I think, I think it's correct. It's a very short but correct um, uh, way. Could you like? Would you like to uh, also speak? Just explain further. Uh, are you talking to me? No, it's like Deriva. But thank you, Avanel. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, more. Thank you. Deriva wrote in the text, and I want him if he can speak to explain it. Okay, if not, then Kerot, yeah, and then Milat. Kerot. Uh, yeah, uh, I could be wrong. I'm most probably going to be wrong, but you know, I understand it from my uh, research, from my report. Uh, there are tools, uh, and there are two kits that are collection of tools that uh, perform specific tasks. And but the main things are adapters. Adapters connect these things. So. We have the database, we have the prompts in general, the prompt tells us, uh, tells the chatbot uh, how to perform things. Uh, so the database stores the, the, the data and the memory records with the, the chat we had. So the main thing, the adapter is the connector as I've said. So uh, the, agents, uh, the, the agents are the tools, the toolkits and uh, what do you call uh, uh, sorry, I, I forgot one, one of the agents, but so these agents are responsible for performing each task and the adapters are uh, re responsible for uh, integrating each adapters or each agent uh, to perform one thing. So the way I understand our project is that we have a database, we have a uh, prompt that tells a chat about uh, what it is and how to do things. We give it an example and we already have D D uh, the DBTs so whenever we ask questions or we, whenever we ask some explanation it searches from the dvds the end so the main thing the llm what the llm does is the llm co converts our conversation or our english, plain english text into a sql uh, query so that sql query is matched with the dvds or the sql uh, that we have or we already set up and it's simply displays that so that's how far that, I, I think that's that, that's in general i mean of course it's uh, slightly vague to understand for others but i think you are there like i think you have understood the very essence which is what the prompt is doing that it's translating it's our chat it's a simple chat it is an instructor to the gpt and it's called in context learning and that basically from the information there is called context. So whenever we think of like, oh, this 
this model has like a hundred, I don't know, uh, 8,000 token limit or 128,000 token limits, all that, that's called the context window. So the context window allows GPTs to, or any, any other model, an LLM model, to understand our conversation. So every his or of how history would be, then it will read it from that context window. Now from that context window, exactly the point is that you generate, so everything you information you give is in the context, whether it's a, your database, whatever, in the form of a text, you have to extract that context for the GPT to know what that is. Now, it's you're not retraining, but it's called in-context learning. That means GPT, while trying to predict the next word, it update of what you gave, and then until the end, then it learns from context what you gave it, right? For example, if you gave it, you know, I love Pen Academy, then what happens is that it goes and looks at, it first is tokenized them, and then it looks at, at these different tokens. In this case, the tokens will be I, it's, you know, it's how it breaks the tokens is dependent on the model, but normally it basically is like uh, adjectives are out and, you know, adjectives are on their own, words are on their own and uh, you know, conjugations are separated. So it's basically, it does it uh, in a different way, but let's imagine it breaks it now into words. I love and uh, 10, 10 in academy. Then while trying to learn, like it's it's first, it reads I and then predicts the next one. Oh, the next one is space. Then the next one, the next one is love. So for each of them, of course, it, it has now updated its memory like its model like it has like this let's call it ram type very um, like it's not part of the model but um, like a parameter it's being tuned and then it goes and predicts and then from the, by solving that problem the prediction problem and updating the weight then it basically goes and predicts next what it is when it's predicting what it is of course you have you said i love 10 academy what follows up normally when someone says that it has seen some examples and some you know whatever and then it synthesizes okay a follow-up oh just like nana it would say uh wow that's amazing that you love 10 academy we love also 10 academy and keep the good work right so then it, it adds one and how much it reads how much it outputs from that depends actually on how many limit you gave it output limits most open ai um gpts they have a limit of uh, 4,096. That's the output window. The input context is actually really a lot. So if you are using the latest model, it's actually 1, 128,000 um, characters. So, I mean, uh, tokens. So you basically can't fit anything there uh, in the input. So I think what you said is exactly uh, Fanuel, uh, not, not uh, what, who was that? Sorry, I, I forgot. Um, I think it was, uh, was speaking sorry i forgot um it was Kerod. okay Kerod. yeah sorry so Kerod, what you said is exactly then when you ask it here is my in that context window here is my uh my data schema here is how i want it that's the prompt right so you put it as prompt or exchange of message still they are just different types of prompts then it reads from that it understands by solving that puzzle you know of earlier what i said it knows that these things are more about a square i mean it's just like the learning the model and generates the the code in your case you specified it that only return code a square syntax blah 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 in the prompt and then it gives you now that's returned so now you have now different steps from that. If you are using code interpreter, code interpreter is OpenAI is its own model. Like it's it's basically what you call adapter or the part that executes. It's just another machine. So it's not an LLM. It's basically interfaces with LLM and executes that one, like that common. It's, it's, it's SQL, right? But code interpreter in this case cannot do that because it doesn't know your database. So you cannot solve it with code interpreter. But if you have given code interpreter data, uploaded some CSV, you, they, they allow you to download, you know, to upload up to 10 gigabyte, 
if you upload many data points and then as files as csvs or as anything then as pdf then of course it can query from that by constructing because it's just a, you know another machine it constructs maybe its own thing and then it queries from that data and it gives you if it is for example a plot that you asked then it generates a python core to plot and then executes that if the python code has a mistake it goes back to the llm and says this this code is has error of this type and then the it solves again the llm tries to solve that one it gives back after some conversation it's called run steps then you get um the code basically you, you get what you want so that's code interpreter right and it's the same whether it's auto gpt or anything you have that adapters or connectors that executes on your machine or on a uh, cloud wherever that the return the response of the LLA. so what you exactly now do i think that's why i care that you are correct up to that point from that on how you handle you must have an executor right to be able to perform so now i will go into the details and uh, yeah so daniel is also correct so do you want to explain a little bit daniel get up on on functions and i mean there are many ways to, to achieve the same thing so um you know the same thing can be done many times and the the new the latest ones on OpenAI are custom gpts and functions and assistants uh they do if you want to say daniel you can okay yeah i understand and uh, milad do you want did you want to say something before i start Um, so, um, my internet was slow and I didn't really hear the question, though uh, from somebody's answer, I thought the question was how do we know, how, how does the LLM know our database? I mean, how can... Yes. Uh, am I correct? Yes, you are, yeah. Okay, so, from the articles that I was reading yesterday, uh, we can only give... Uh, we can give our LLM a, a test of our database. For example, we can tell the LLM that we, well, the tables that we have. So it won't be creating um, an, uh, made up, so it won't be making up uh, non-existent uh, tables or rows. So we can uh, give it uh, a small amount of our database and so that it can understand it. Uh, so this is what I was, reading yesterday it's perfect yeah it, it's exactly that right so it, it all you do is you instruct it i think Carol also was saying the riba was also saying in the text so what happens that you instruct you describe it's as if like you know an expert somewhere you know you call that expert and you you want to describe them imagine that expert remembers has a memory of amazing memory right you tell it everything like i have a database of this with columns of that and type of this i have this other database also in this table that is like that and my problem is that i have i i want to know how to query um this table and that you know like i have a question and that question is you know you can just tell them do you understand yeah i understand i expect to tell you and then you say like okay uh now i want to ask you a question right okay um how can i know how many people are there in my database and then the expert will say like oh because you told me that you have a user table and the user table has a thing all i do is just count the user table but if you have asked that different users are in different tables then it would tell you ah of course you have to join some you know you have to count this 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 table and then join them uh, or kind of like that right or just count them and sum them so Basically, it, the LLM is that expert that you instruct, you tell it in detail. Of course, you want to get more accuracy. That's called prompt engineering, how you tell, how you communicate to that expert. But after that, it generates, it's basically, it cannot come and type for you, but it can, it will give you in, again back in the format that you asked it. If you ask, for example, this expert only give me SQL queries, then it will just basically tell you like, okay, now type, Joy, you know, select, blah, 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 and then it gives you, and you record that, and then you execute it. Or if you have a mistake, then you ask it back, like, I mean, you you made a mistake, 
like this table doesn't exist. Oh, then it says my bad. Like I think from the note I took it earlier, it's probably this one, and then it corrects for you. That's basically what happens, the interaction. Now you must have the executor or the adapter, what we say is the, the executor that does. So before you know going, I'm just talking a lot, but let's start seeing some um some actions, right? So here I have. So here I have just uh, uh, another my, my own or like some open source uh, tool that I customized for us. Uh, and this is basically just another chat GPT that it's an interface, it's a chat window, but it, it has, I have now put my executor right there. So a Jupyter notebook. So the Jupyter kernel, I connect with the Jupyter kernel in the background. So I, I run both the back end and the front end. And the back end in this case is the Jupyter kernel. And I am I have uh, basically a message interface that connects whenever code is given. It, it the, this this chatbot backend gives it passes it to the uh, Jupyter kernel, and the Jupyter kernel executes and gives the result, and the result is displayed. So all I ask it is like you know simply like I ask it something, and then there is a code, and even the error, the executed error, I get it right. So now I will ask it, um, tell me, uh, so you might, you see my screen. Okay. So normal, I can do normal like that. And it would, of course, um, you know, it would tell me with code now, because this is just a Jupyter notebook. So my, so, what I am gonna, what I want you to focus is, I am actually generating a Jupyter notebook in this case. It's not, it's all this text and all that is actually just as if it's a markdown. So it actually was translated through the Jupyter. So now if I want to look at the, um, so if I want to open, um, So let me go instead of there where it is, um, yeah. So what happens if I want to look inside? Somehow my, my computer is freezing because I'm sharing the whole screen. So let me look at, um, so this is basically using async earlier, I think what people so uh, so i mean i'm just focusing on the So these are all basically how I am communicating with the. Um, uh, so let me. So it, these are all how. I am, I think this is, I'm showing you just so that 
you know what are the different files like so you know that i need you need to connect with your um so in this case i am using a simple snake uh, snake mq just this is just a simple python based uh, message passing it it doesn't have like uh, rabbit mq or others it doesn't have that much it's very light but it actually works just if you want to just simple connect uh, between two systems in this case between my chatbot um back my backend as and then the jupiter uh, kernel so so then if i go actually the diff all the um all my All my definitions of what happens is um, these are, you know, like if I download, if I upload, I will show you. If I upload a file, then it's here that it inspects the the file that I'm I'm downloading. It's basically this is just what the backend, um, you know, what in the front end it it calls to the backend and then uh, processes. So, for example, here is the GPT code, and this is how I am writing. This is the prompt. Whenever there is a file, of course, the file is parsed and all that inputs. It's going to be prepared as a, as you know, as a content to be sent as a context, and then together with, as you can see, this is the messages. You know how you write your prompts are in this way. So, for example, first here is a history of what I asked you to do earlier. The actual prompt follows after end of history, right? So I have to give it our conversation. I have to tell it that we had a conversation before because every time it has no memory. Just think of it as like, it, it only has that RAM that every, our conversation needs, it has to uh, remember, it, it has to be accessed, it has to be written into some place. And then every time you, we ask it, it's as if we are spinning it, we are switching it on. So that means we have to actually load from memory or from the hard disk to the RAM so that it can answer. So that's even if the history you think it's seamless for you, but in the background, you know that it there is what's called rag is the concept where you know you if it's a lot of conversation you had you have to select so you have to select the right um, part of the history, but in this case we assume it's not going to be that much and it also handles uh, you will see that it only selects the first uh, some history it doesn't remember everything, but because of i'm instructing it write a python code in a triple you know backtick markdown code block that does the following and the following is the user prompt right so now this is what prompt thing is you are actually writing one prompt with it's kind of like a template and the message is given from the start of history until the end of history so all of that the message you will put it into this text and then you will add end of history because you tell it the actual prompt follows after the history. Now this is the prompt. Now the prompt is write Python code and the user. Then we give it a note what it does. First, think step by step. This is called chain of thoughts. Um, and you can do, you know, you can write down in English. Then generate valid Python code in a code block. Make sure all code is valid. It be run in a Jupyter Python 3 kernel environment. Define every variable before you use it. For data munging, you can use NumPy, data parser, pandas, Joe pandas. For PDF, you can use, okay, sorry. It's just my computer is slower. Okay, and for data munging, this one. And for data extraction, you can use this. For visualization, you can use Matplotlib. So is, can you see like now, it knows what I have. I am also describing my environment, what is executed. In your case, you have to tell it it's a Postgres, it, it's a Postgres of version this, and you know, you're know you basically specifying because of that. So then in a teacher mode, if the code modifies or produces a file at the end of the code block, insert a print statement that prints a link to it as a HTML string. So the, because every of that string, you parse it and you put it somewhere, and therefore that's what um you ask it to do okay then after that you basically just use that and you you call basically your uh, open ai 
and the result you send it back uh, the result to to be executed um, by the Jupyter network. So yeah, so I don't understand. Oh, I think my my battery might be also dying uh, soon. Somehow it's not um, okay. So let's go back to where I was. Okay. So now that's where I typed and that I got. Even if it's not a data, I'm just asking it a Python code. Basically, it is generating that and it was working. Now I am, if it all works um, for this, I can upload file. And let me upload some CSV if I have. So um, maybe just let me, but this is a big file. So let me try to select something that is, um, CSV somewhere, uh, I think it's, if I select, Okay, let me actually say like this. Some JSON. Okay. So now this JSON is some form of uh, language about some company that they want to use in their, uh, you know, it's, it's a translation, like how to translate between English and Amharic language and that for, for a Telegram bot. Okay. Now I want to ask it, so this one, um please plot um the number of rows um so i can just specifically specify this file so that So now, as you can see, I am just asking it a very vague question. And we will know what code it generates for that. So the code, of course, it got error, you know, because it assumes it was a, uh, it was a CSV file, but it was not a CSV file. So I can correct um, a JSON. So or I, if I added, JSON just in the question. Okay, so I have I am now asking it that I corrected it. It's a JSON, so it should correct itself and answer the previous questions. Now, as you can see it does it does that right so it does basically wrote improved its code it says it uses read json and then it extracts the value and then it tries to solve it but the problem and then it prints the download the file that means the image it generates but the problem is that it doesn't have um you know it's unhashable it's, it's a very complex code that i gave it but let me search for um Uh, CSV file. That data trajectory. That's it. I think. So maybe just this one is fine. So so I'm opening this file. So 
and just going to be okay it's iris csv so now i am going to download uh, upload the iris csv and ask it so you can see now whenever i upload because of the prompt when file is uploaded it also extracts the just using python the the kind of the columns right so in this case then i can ask it uh, plot the histogram i don't even Um, let me try exceed. Okay, so because I I am okay, so then I have to. Let me stop this one. So as you know, um, yep. uh, so what if So now it's sending this with the data. It doesn't know what I am saying. Of course, this is not a good prompt. So just like any instruction, a bad prompt just leads to many. If I, I will show you when I, if I want to know uh, something specific and if I am making it either in my prompts or in my query. So you can see here, it generates for me these plots, right? So you can see now that it rate and it determined itself just because knowing that I didn't um, do anything, it, it basically plots all the histogram that is available in Iris data, right? And also not only that, it interprets all of this. This code displays histogram, you know, in this case we are using 15 beans. Blah. So it explains to me because in the code, I, I told it to explain the code as well as also uh, what it does. And then basically, because it's a Python code, it's a whatever, it generates this course, right? So that is how it's working. It's in the background, it may be seamless, but this code is not GPT that's running. It's me who I have connected an adapter or a connector. In this case, a Jupyter notebook is running and returning the answer and the answer is being, and because Jupyter notebook generates all of that, and and basically that it gives me all the image whatever um and then i display it here right? it's basically that do you have question yeah rudolf Okay, thank you, Yabiba. So if I understand what you're trying to explain to us is we can customize uh, um, the the response of the uh, GPT, basically. So we can go in the background, the backend, and tell the GPT what he can uh, display to us after maybe when we ask him to, to, plot, a, to plot a variable, for instance, like in your case, a histogram, if you identify uh, everything that can be plot as a histogram. Yeah. Uh, so if you didn't, if, uh, let us imagine that you didn't uh, specific anything in the background. So when you ask him, a, we ask him a question, then uh, it will maybe generate some error 
because he really didn't understand what your, I mean, your contest, if I can understand what you're yeah. trying to tell us. Yeah, so it, it is basically, think of it just as an expert. It knows Python, SQL, and everything. It can write that. Of course, it sometimes hallucinates. So my role, my code, is to try to bridge that gap. First is write it. There are many ways to solve it. Find a way to solve it. In this case, for example, just, okay, I ask the prompt. I can change the prompt, you know, uh, in a number of ways. So I could explain to it, like, um, you know, here, I'm, I'm going to share this one, just for example. One example of prompt, like, just in, um, in uh, here. Okay, so it's basically that, right? It's, I can instruct it if, if something I'm not happy, I want it to generate more, I can explain it here. Or I can explain it, I can do more from the actually from here as well. So now this was uh, the part, but like you can ask some questions. So give me one question. Can one person give me to ask some question about this data? that I can type. Yeah, we would like to know the outlier. Uh, okay, fantastic. Uh, nice. I'm just, and I didn't sleep that much, therefore I don't have, I'm not creative in asking question. Um, so in this case, basically, uh, to visualize data. So, so I am more, of course, the more I am specific, the better it is. But let's see what is it outputting. So the process that it goes is that this one goes to the GPT, it, it fetches, and then this part are then um, plotted, right? So you can see that it goes and read so this is the code generated it for each column because i didn't specify a column it does that and it imports the functions and then the columns are there and for columns it, it loops and then it's if it's not uh depending on a type either it's not a number then it will remove like that one it will just not plot it but if it is that then it prepares an axis it does a box plot and does it and just does really proper labeling, right? So you can see that now these are, yeah, like it, it's sepal weeds has more outliers um, and that. And what else? Yeah, that's the last question I'm gonna type. Lots. Between, um, you want to specify what type of correlation? If, so let's just type that.
So this can be improved, of course, me streaming instead of right now, I'm not streaming, but in a stream mode, whatever result would come. But in the code sense, I want to, I want it to give me the whole code. So that's why it's not being streamed. But in a normal chatbot, you don't want to wait this long, right? That's where a sync is coming. That's why. So, so it's now has generated and it's running the code now. It's not uh, going there, but we'll see. And then it got um, string to float. So now I can actually just say, take your port to I am asking it to correct because now it has this history as normally that's what happens to you that you have that history that it's an error so you give it and if you are using assistant it's called you can actually give the output of the function and then it would know but otherwise you basically give it back with saying only like your your code produces error so correct and uh, and produce plot so then it would now know you know, again, it has a uh, string to float. Um, string columns. Between um, columns, right? So it's basically, I mean, we haven't checked, but let's see the code. It was basically, this is where sometimes they say that chat GPT is just more of, if you don't instruct it well, it's like a very a junior person, right? Sometimes it's beyond, it's very expert, but sometimes it's just a, a junior person. Like in a sense that it doesn't really, it tries to always write minimal code. And normally that doesn't work. So you have to correct it or instruct it step by step. It should produce pre-process and, um, and that, and that will help it. So now again, this one, it's not, but let's see the code. So what it does, iterate over the columns, check if the column is of the object type, try to convert the column to floats, and uh, cannot convert column to floods and it tries to do but um, um so what we need to do is patient um columns that are not Um, and then it transform the basically um, categorical Someone is typing, let's go. No, I mean, this is, you know, why I like it. It's, this is exactly what in real life, what you have to do. Of course, you can be more creative. You can edit the code. I think I will show you Lida. That's what also Lida actually does differently. Um, it's actually, you, you should edit and instruct it even better. How, but in this case, 
So let's see. So you can control more of this inside plot or leader is, yeah, you can see that. Now with the proper instruction that it is able to do, so because what I have done is that, so transform categorical columns into plot by following best practice. That adding that best practice allows it to much more think step by step, right? And that usually solves it. Load the data. Here is its plan of execution. Load the data, identify the categorical columns, convert the categorical columns into numerical float values, calculate the correlation matrix. And that's if you follow the code, that is exactly what it does, right? Then it succeeds and here is the correlation matrix. Do you have question? Yeah, Nasrallah. And Reddit as well. Okay, no, go on, Nasrallah. Yeah, um, so I would like to know how do you start the process of um, pre-processing, even though it's not 100% perfect now, but actually it's, it's more about the, the how do I say, the technical thinking or, and, or how do I, uh, the insightful thinking of knowing exactly how to, see it, uh, or try to pre-process what exactly you want your assistant or your uh, customized uh, agents need to do. So uh, my question is just like overall, like the crucial thinking way of how you go through this process, like how do you see and, and based on, of course, it's based on the business uh, yeah. needs, that itself actually yeah. needs some crucial thinking. So, um, but would you mind if you share your advice yeah. on that? So, so this is, you know, I, I'm I'm gonna skip to Lida. So in Lida, so I'm just let me go to it. Uh, I have probably there. Okay. So I'm just gonna show you only the Jupyter notebook that I ran before. Um, so this is, for example, your own application. I was processing it through that, just to see. And it, well, we didn't use it, just for disclaimer. But now, LIDA is another way. It's called Automatic Generation of Visualizations and Infographics, right? It's uh, Microsoft again, uh, more, but you can, you know, I customized all the, the parts for us at, at some point. But so what it does is basically the same. So the concept is the same. And if you want to see leader source code, it's this is the source code, right? So in the components, so the data model, for example, here is the data class. So there are different data models, the visual, you know, this generator. So it has some hypothesis, data summary, and data file name. And completion results as text, log probabilities, prompt, and suffix. And uh, of course, upload URL has a URL, a string, you know, and goal is defined by question, visualization, rationally, and index. And then also a markdown, if it's like uh, representing, this is how a representation would work. Um, and then summary data is this one. It just, of course, we want a name, a file name, data description, and all that. So this is the data model that I want to use later, all, all the, you know, whenever I'm interacting, OK? So if I look at, at in my prompts, so uh, let, let's just, you know, you don't know it, so, but maybe just like, let me show you the tutorial and then we can go to this one because it, it might not make sense um, if I say it now. Okay, so so it, it does, what it does is first it imports, so I, it has a manager at the FX generation and some utils, right? So what I, I give it is, so using the utils, I definitely just, you know, it's very simple, I read the data frame and I get this data. This is a normal operation. So now the next part is I want to give it, I'm I'm summarizing data and I'm asking it, given this data, so this is much more of an automatic generation. I ask it, given this data, Generate, it's called, I am using summarize and then goals, right? So first summarize this data. So when it is summarizing, so I'm going to show you now the source code. What does it mean summarize? So there is this function called summarize. 
But what it does that summarize in, 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 in there is that it exactly earlier you saw when I uploaded the data, it extracts the file names and prepares them. It does the same there. It goes and extracts the file name, the file columns, the, and then some examples from the file, one, two, three, five examples. So, and that's where on the, so on this, uh, for example, on summarize, if we look at this data, so the system prompt for summarize is this one. You are an experienced data analyst that can annotate data sets. Your instructions are as follows. Always generate the name of the data set and the data description, because if you want to run it, you need that one. Always generate a field. And you know, in prompt engineering, making capital, whatever, sometimes helps. Um, and then always uh, generate semantic type, a single word for each field given in its value, company, whatever, example. You must return an updated JSON dictionary without any preamble or explanation. And basically what you do is that you use that system summary system and then when I summarize, I, I initialize, then it gets and fetches, um, you know, whatever I call, it basically, it enriches, it does the processing. If it's not nice, if it's not complete, it does all that part of communication with the system. And um, then, you know, for example, if there is an error message, you update it. So, and then that summarize basically finally then generates a summary. So if we look at that, the summary type is this one. So I gave it uh, a data that is actually this one. So so that for your reference, this was application data for court A, and this was basically what the your form was translated. So I gave it just the entire form, right? I didn't do anything, any transformation. And of course, you remember uh, applied before English label, able to self fund, and all of that is there. And now it's generating itself automatically. So you, we don't have to, uh, for you, it's if you're using Lida, it means you give just the SQL, you know, the database schema, and it generates for you different things uh, according to the data model. The data model has a name. Then if it's uh, where this name is, it's, uh, you know, it's the same as the file name and the data descriptions are fields, column, it's a column, it's a user ID properties, it's the D type of string samples because the data lay uh, on this data is actually 23 samples and number of unique values is one semantic type description. It does for that. Now I asked it to generate afterwards, I asked it to generate goals and I asked it to generate two goals, right? So that means now it knows that, and if you look at the goal code, another one, another system, this is a prompt. The prompt facilitates for everything you want. The prompt facilitates, of course, this thing. In this case, the generation of the prompt is that you are an experienced data analyst who can generate a given number of insights, uh, insightful goals about data. When given a summary of the data and a specified persona, so sometimes the persona is that I am, you know, describe this data for a CEO that's a persona or act like this, act like that. So that's basically persona. The visualizations you recommend must follow visualization best practices, must be bar charts instead of pie charts for comparing quantities and be meaningful, Long, plot longitude and latitude or maps where appropriate. They must also be relevant in the specified persona. Each goal must include question, a visualization. The visualization must reference the exact column fields from the summary and the rationale uh, which is a justification for, you know, why you are doing that. And then the format instruction is that you have to format the output must be in this form. And then basically the goal is another thing called generate. It uses that prompt and this prompt combines it. And uh, finally, just basically, of course, we pass it to uh, GPT to do, right? And that's why based on this, it generates this goal. And the output is exactly goal. Let, I asked it two goals. So that's basically Goal one is what is the distribution of English proficiency levels among applicants? I didn't instruct it, right? It's the 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 part that the just it has to do. I I specified so it told okay there is English proficiency in the column so maybe they want it therefore let me visualize and the reason is so in the visualization type it recommends is bar chart of English level column and the rationale is. The visualization will provide insight into the distribution of English proficiency levels among applicants. It will help understand the level of language skills applicants have, whatever. So you see, this is generated. This is generated from LLM, the previous one was. And the second goal is, what is the proportion of applicants who are able to self-fund? 
right? So this is again, it's auto-generated. And then the visualization is that it is gonna do pie chart of able to self fund column. And the reason is that the visualization will provide insight the proportion of applicants who are able to self fund the training program. It will help us understand the financial capacity of applicants and how it may impact their ability to participate in the program. And I say, okay, go for it, right? And then, but then I am much more asking, I want to have, I want to generate goals as a persona, as a certain type of person. So I define the persona to be a talent acquisition manager, okay? And generate goals. Again, in this case, 10 goals. And you would see, of course, it's not good at that, but it's also just, even if I, I, I specified the persona, it's still, it's goal, first goal is absolutely proficiency. Second goal is gender distribution of applicants. Third goal is what is the distribution of highest completed level of education among applicants. And uh, the other one is what is the distribution of work experience, you know, and what is the distribution of SQL proficiency and what is the distribution of Python proficiency and does that. And then I ask it, okay, uh, generate visualization based on those goals. I gave it a goal, a personal goal of number one. In this case, I gave it uh, the third, the third, for the third goal, generate visualization. You know, it of course sometimes fails, sometimes provides a good plot like this, for example, uh, for another one, but that is how it does. So you have to fix when you have an error, but that's, that's the point. Again, so what, um, uh, Nasrallah, so the point why I want to mention this is how, of course, that analysis, whatever, is the hard part, especially, uh, but it is done also, many people are doing this, you know, uh, inside pilot or this LIDA and others are trying to also auto automatically generate those goals to do EDA, goals to clean, goals to do, and then, you know, combine that all so that the user, when the user asks, you know, you do, you provide a good, um, a good insight. Does that, is that related to your question? Does it help you? Yeah. Uh, it's just that I want to add more note into it is, is that it's always, uh, even though tools might help is still the crucials of human mindset. It's actually something that's valuable. So th that's, uh, that's why I asked the question. It's like crucially how we see and how we try to solve something. If, if we need to uh, customize a certain model. Yeah, so you have to open every source code. And that's why you would you would see the power, you know, you can customize for everything. Even if both codes that I showed you, it's like open them the code, you know, and just understand how they do it. I would show you also how even um, Auto GPT works. If you go and open the code, it's very, agents are working similar. You basically select and you know iteratively i you know how many times it does you have to define but otherwise it selects executes it and goes back it's basically agents are that type so but it ultimately these are all sometimes you know of course ai is getting so powerful but if you want the job and if you just go i mean that's why you have to know just generating a code and running a code no one will hire you right i am showing you a lot of this thing just you could actually whenever we ask you to submit something you could do that but i you know you're not going to be hired and we'll figure it out and we have we also use i mean for your own sake we also use a lot more of api you know chat gpt to understand your code to understand your report to go through each level to understand who copied to with from who i mean we don't care about copying you know here is this is not a university but did you put effort right that's the most important part and because the only reason is that no one wants just people who write code and execute. I mean, that's just, but the people who think, who work hard, who, you know, use and answer business question in a certain way by being accelerated by AI, I think everybody wants. So, you know, don't fool yourself. If you really just generate a code, run and, and give, nobody really, nowadays, nobody, everybody knows writing the code and generating some plots and insights, nobody, nobody pays for it people pay for people who really think exactly you know what to do with the capacity that they have now how can they be better how can they you know uh, generate more quality for example if 
like I am typing, right? I am I'm using, let's imagine here, I'm using um, a, a code to type. I'm, let's imagine just I am generating. I can describe, of course, right? Just a, a thing I can say, right? Uh, so this is a chat, you know, like uh, what's called copilot, GitHub copilot, right? So I can write, uh, write a code to select um, users from this database. Now, you know, I'm, I'm just, it's suggesting. So I can basically continue generating this code in my editor, right? So now it's, it may not be useful, but it facilitates me to especially here, what is one of the most important part I use it is much more to do like uh, just like the inline uh, commenting. So now in the world where you can do this, not having inline documentation, not having you know. Uh, so if I add for everyone, I can of course later add it. So it will just be you know then i can actually say arg so for example if i do this it will just know that there must be an arg definition in the inline so if it doesn't all i do is uh, there are shortcuts that you do but like already when you just type one word it would know what it, it does right now so i can actually do many things i can um let's imagine let's take some complex code Maybe I don't have complex code here, so let's take this one. Um, let's take their code, right? I can select the entire code, right? And I can ask it to explain. Um, so we just then explain, right? Now, I can do this, and I can get explanation about this code so that I can get faster with this code, right? So this one is, as you can see here, it's explaining the code, the entire code for me in English, right? And I can get, so I am being accelerated here, right? So I'm writing the code, I know what I want to do, but all of this is now at the fingertips of everybody else, not only you. So how can you compete here is much more of working hard to be useful, right? And to, to allow yourself, because you have this, and this is being accelerated such that you write a good code or you can actually uh, your structure if you don't have readme now it's it's very sad i mean why why in this world to not have readme it's just you know these are mandates it's not even a requirement it's, it's just like you have to do it right so in a way i agree i mean I'm, I'm i'm kind of carried away maybe a little bit but the most important part is that use it to accelerate you but not to generate so that you just submit because if you do that, you know, you can, nobody's going to hire you. Um, because in any way, we try to help you as well. When you have that temptation in the background, we do all the similarities with, with respect to all submissions that has been there so far. Um, in Ten Academy, we do uh, greet it, we cluster it, similarities, we compute. It is fine. I think, as we said, we don't care if you copy. But if you understand it, we are fine, right? It's, it's not it, here. It's much more about, this is a chance. It's not a university. We don't give you a degree. We only want to make sure that you, you get to a job. And whatever we know, we teach you, we show you. Um, so, but this part of like generating EDAs, you know, writing codes, whatever now is simple. Generating images, it's all simpler. But I think as Nasrallah was saying, ultimately people would hire you to think and really get the bottom of it and, and be accelerated by it. So if in the past you were writing, you know, 100 side lines of codes, that's useful. Now you can write maybe 1000 lines of code that actually is also useful. And so that that one, I mean, let me stop with that because there are certain questions. Um, so Shatu, that's true. The GPT generates a Python code and, the, and then that code is fed through the system, like the one that is, we wrote GPT uh, is fed to the Jupiter, 
kernel and the Jupyter kernel executes and, and gives back the answer. And then that's the case. So that's the one. Rudolf, do you have a question? Yeah. Rudolf? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would like to, to know as a GPT is uh, an expert. Okay. How yeah. how did he get uh, that expertise? Yeah. For my so, my previous exactly. for my previous reading. Hello. How does it become? You mean how does it become? How does it know how to? How does it become expert to write Python code or how does it become expert? to explain me a code, whatever code I give it, for example, um, that how does it know it's it's that? Is that your question? Yeah, both, both, both. Yeah. Yeah, so it's the training, right? They used every GitHub, public GitHub code there, right? It's, uh, it basically does all of the free sources that you are consulting, all of the dev.com, uh, articles and blogs that you have seen, all of the uh, Stack Overflow that is there, all of the you know code bases that are open source code bases of an you know, Apache or any other big projects like Linux, like everything you know that is written, including the source code of Python itself, including they used every available Python from the compiler of Python to the you know, every other simple questions that are asked in Stack Overflow to everything to train it. So it has, the model has learned from every example that humans wrote um, and that it has seen. And they continuously feed it itself. So that's why, of course, it knows not only Python. If I open now, um, you know, let me go to, let's say, um, so LIDA in this case doesn't, but let me go to, you know, some, let's, let's, let, um, so now I am, okay, this is, um, so let me just, this is a bash script. I can still like, you know, So now I can chat with it. So I'm just, I'm using Copilot here. So I can do many things, you know, of course I can explain, but I can also document it. I can, but I can also write a test for it. It's just simply, but let's explain. Let's explain this code. So now this code is being explained. It's a bash script. So, you know, so the provide call shell script named whatever is, let's go through the code. It starts. You know, it knows whether I am writing, you know, uh, a, a bash script or like, you know, a bash or uh, React or Java or anything it has seen it. So it can program, it can be helpful in every programming, you know, whether it's Go, whether it's anything, whether it's I'm creating some video scripts or anything it, it does because it has been trained by it. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes, we have. So, uh, for my reading, I've heard that uh, uh, the GPT user a transformer, and the core functionality is uh, the self attention. So, yeah, so it's that, that, cell... yeah, so that's the algorithm exactly they they use to um, train the model, and it's basically in another word. It's basically embeds everything into query and memory. You know, so it, all the transformation, the, the transformer, um, the mask transformer, and on top of that, they have also actually reinforcement learning that is to customize people to label, to tell, to instruct. So it's called instruct GPT. So instruct GPT is like it's also instructed um, to do something. For example, to to already have a base instruction, which is OpenAI has its base. For example, it doesn't answer certain equations, whatever. So, you know, and then they form a system on top of it. 
but ultimately, yeah, there is a model, there is an instruction, like much more of rewarding uh, its behavior. Some metadata is being uh, uh, adjusted through the, the reinforcement learning to learn reward. That reward came from uh, specific, I think it's actually part of it is trained, you know, that data labeling happens in Kenya even, so that they, that label data, the humans actually label data, and then that is used as a reward for that enforcement and then built on top of it. So I think you can read more about that um, in there, how they train their model. Okay. So thank you, Yabiba. I think let's stop because it's over time. But if you have any question now that I can answer two questions, um, and I hope, and also I want you to tell me if this was helpful for you to think and to interact because seeing an example that works might sometimes be helpful. Okay. Nasrallah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not a question, um, but uh, I just appreciate the fact that you show us this. Um, I, I hope uh, with this today information, I might be able to write millions of code, not actually thousands of code, because I already hit that. So that's yeah. that that's the goal and uh yeah. i i hope that my other teammates aim for the same yeah yeah i think that's why you know we always are trying to be the latest in such a way that what is the job demanding and we try and to bring it so that you are our hope that you become expert over a repeated cycle so we not only have this next week and then you know at least there's going to be three four chatbots this code generation as a query generation and some other you know visualizations what with that and and by the end you are going to be more comfortable you know if it doesn't happen today don't worry but like keep grinding and by the end of it you really get the you know you just like anything you will just get over it and by then you are more powerful and then that means people are going to be much more wanting you and that's our goal so you know, uh, we will try to keep our deal, the, you know, our part of the deal. And the same, we expect everyone, you know, to put effort, to learn, to improve, but not just literally, you know, you know, not just copy, but really immerse yourself to get the best out of these technologies and build tools faster and better. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, but, uh, I just want to say uh, one thing, one one little board, um, one more note. Um, it would be appreciated if 10 Academy teams actually give us this type of sessions that be a bit more advanced. It's not a necessary that we need to actually implement those features, but it's just to help us to open some doors in our brain or just give us some insight about what we can do. Because um, sometimes you just need guiding to the path and let your creativity lead it so um i hope you guys think uh yeah no, we, we always I think in a way for example the starter code that Rehma did you know it's it's her she took all the you know if you work 10 hours expect we are working 12 hours in the background so which means for everything we try we don't give you any easy problem because that doesn't help and that's why even dealing with installing postgres yeah it's life you have to you know how to use, how to simplify that, whatever, you can use everything, but that's life. And we try almost always not, of course, expose you to the best that we know, the most challenging out there, because ultimately you want to demonstrate that you were capable conversing with the same language they speak, you know, as well as with the same type of skill and understanding, you know, what is like, you know, GitHub Copilot doing, how am I going to use it versus as well as also code interpreter or a latest code that came out and we will have also customizing another LLM yourself just you know fine tuning so by the end all the vocabularies are with you and so when you speak you speak like really you know someone who knows what they're talking and that's because you have worked on it so because it will repeat just don't worry if something you don't get it today or this week um but keep up just keep up and we will we will we'll do I think we will always do um that okay so any one question before we close if not then let's close it thank you so much everyone and 10 academy team we can stop the recording